sources in uh, Indian Foreign Ministry have told Beyond World is One that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has sent a customary message to his Pakistani counterpart Imran Khan on Pakistan Day. Khan took to Twitter to share the message in which Modi has said that he extended his greetings and best wishes to the people of Pakistan on the country's National Day. Sources in the Ministry of uh, external Affairs also told us that it was a customary message that is sent by Prime Minister Modi to heads of state on their days of national importance. India banned Yasin Malik separatist group Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front under the anti-terror law. The announcement was made by India's Interior Secretary Rajiv Gauba. JKLF chairman Yasin Malik was jailed this month after a law that allows for suspects to be held for up to two years without charge. Goba further said that uh, the authorities will continue to review the decision to provide security to separatist leaders in Jammu and Kashmir province. India's ruling party, the BJP, has released a second list of candidates for the upcoming general elections. The party has named 36 candidates from four states. The list includes the highest number of candidates from Andhra Pradesh, 23, along with six candidates from Maharashtra, five from Odisha and each one each from Assam and Meghalaya. Four days after an under-construction building collapsed in uh, However, the uh, death toll has risen to 15 NDRF and SDRF teams along with fire and emergency service personnel are continuing rescue efforts. An FIR has been registered against building owners. All four owners have surrendered before the police. The engineer has been taken into police custody. The district uh, administration has announced a magistrate inquiry into the mishap. At least 80 people have been killed from floods and of landslides in the easternmost province of Papua. A deadly floods and landslides struck at the weekend after torrential rain fell. President Joko Vidodo called for the urgent evacuation of victims from the de devastated communities. A Catholic priest was stabbed during a mass uh, in front of his congregation at Canada's largest church. Father Claude uh, Grew, Father Claude Grew, in fact, received minor inju injuries in the altercation during a morning service. Video of the attack, which was being broadcast live, shows a man in a baseball cap rushing to the priest as he stands behind the altar. The man was quickly detained by church's security team. Authorities arrested a 26-year-old suspect who they say is known to police and will be questioned. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has submitted his long-awaited report on alleged collusion between Russia and President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. The Attorney General William Barr will now summarize the report and decide how much to share with Congress. The Special Counsel has already charged six former Trump aides and dozens of Russians. The report is intended to explain any prosecutorial decisions the special counsel has made in the 22 months since his appointment by Deputy U.S. Attorney. U.S. President Donald Trump says he has ordered the withdrawal of recently imposed sanctions against North Korea. In a tweet on Friday, he mentioned additional large-scale sanctions by the U.S. Treasury that had been added to already existing restrictions. It is believed he was referring to the Treasury's move on Thursday to blacklist two China-based shipping companies for reportedly violating sanctions against North Korea. Pyongyang has made no public comment. Residents of Golan Heights have reacted with dismay to Trump's support for Israel over Golan Heights. Most of their residents, majorly the, especially the minority of the plateau, have rejected the citizenship offer by Israel. The group believes that the Trump's acceptance or Israel's rule over the land would change little on the ground.
Syria condemns Trump's remarks that U.S. will recognize Israeli sovereignty over occupied Golan Heights. Syrian state news agency published a statement by foreign ministry that said Trump's Golan Heights remarks showed it's a blind bias towards Israel. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan responded to Trump's statement, uh, saying it threatened to create a new crisis in the region. Syria's major allies, Russia and Iran, also condemned Trump's statement. U.S. has imposed new sanctions on Iran, saying its maximum pressure campaign against the nation continues. 14 people and 17 entities linked Iran's Organization of Defensive Innovation and Research have been sanctioned. The U.S. Treasury Department said in a statement that among those designated for sanctions was the Shahid Karimi Group, which works on missile and explosive-related projects, and four associated individuals. Israeli forces killed two Palestinians and wounded 55 others, taking part in weekly protests along the fortified Israel-Gaza border. The Israeli military said its forces faced around 9,500 demonstrators, some hurling blocks and rocks and uh, rolling burning tires. A military spokeswoman said uh, troops had responded uh, with riot dispersal means and fired according to standard operating procedures. Gaza medical officials say that around 200 people have been killed since Palestinians launched the weekly border protest on March 30th last year. In the midst of the crackdown on Boeing, the airline has also been awarded a $4.1 billion contract to improve ground-based missile defense system. This even as the Pentagon is investigating the acting defense secretary's ties with Boeing. Also, pilots from the American Airlines are all set to test Boeing 737 MAX software fixed on the simulators this weekend. Colombian anti-drug police confiscated one and a half tons of cocaine. The chlorinated cocaine was inside metal casings that resemble wheels. The cocaine was discovered in the Pacific coast and was in fact leaving for Belgium. Colombia is the world's largest cocaine exporter. The toll from the factory explosion in East China has risen to 62. The deadly blast occurred on Thursday following a fire in a fertilizer factory at a chemical industrial park. According to local government sources, 26 out of 62 people confirmed dead have already been formally identified, while the identities of the other 36 uh, deaths have yet to be confirmed. Rescuers are continuing their desperate search for survivors buried in the rubble with a further 28 people reported missing. Two buses collided in central Ghana on killing dozens of people. The accident happened in the Bono East region. Emergency services are at the scene rescuing the passengers still trapped inside the two vehicles. Local media have reported at least 60 people were killed, including nine children. The cause of the accident was not immediately known. The one bed was from Garutipan to Nasi. Thousands of uh, Algerians rallied, demanding the immediate resignation of President Abdelaziz Bouteflika. Despite heavy rain, protesters brandished Algerian flags and pamphlets and marched in the streets. Police trucks were deployed, but there were no reports of clashes between security forces and crowds that packed downtown Algiers.
South American leaders met in Chile with the hopes of forming a new regional bloc to replace uh, the UNASUR bloc established in 2004 by Venezuela's late socialist leader Hugo Chavez. UNASUR has come under criticism for failing to act on Venezuela in the wake of a protracted political and economic crisis in the country. Venezuela's uh, Maduro was not among the leaders invited to meet in the Chilean capital, Santiago. Heads of state from Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Ecuador, Paraguay and Peru joined the summit. French President Emmanuel Macron has slammed what he calls the lies of the Brexit campaign, saying voters would be the first to suffer in the case of a no-deal Brexit. Macron made the comments after a Brussels summit at which the remaining 27 EU members agreed to the extension of the Brexit. Macron threw an ironic bravo to Brexiteers who said the country's exit would be easy. Shops and businesses on Paris's Champs Elysees Avenue are pre prepping up for the upcoming round of Yellow West protests. The Yellow West uh, protests are slated to take place on the 19th consecutive weekend today. Many stores have put up heavy wooden boards to cover shop windows and prevent further damage. The protest, which has seen a decreasing turnout in recent weeks, took a much more violent turn last Saturday with the burning of restaurants and uh, other places and the smashing of shop windows. Thai political parties have geared up for their largest rallies yet, two days ahead of the country's first election since a military coup. The last election happened five years ago. Sunday's general elections have been cast as a high-stakes contest between democracy and military rule, but critics believe that they have been rigged by a new army-backed constitution, giving military-appointed officials a large say in the next government. Parties and candidates are allowed to campaign until 6 p.m. tonight. Mozambique Red Cross provided first aid and emergency supplies to the survivors who arrived in the port city of Baira one week after the devastating cyclone. The cyclone battered the place and bringing strong winds and torrential rains last week before moving inland to neighboring Zimbabwe and Malawi. Official figures show that 242 people have died in Mozambique, although the count is expected to rise. Around 15,000 people are missing in Mozambique. There were tears and anger as the victims of the Mosul ferry disaster were buried. At least 90 people died when the overloaded vessel capsized on Thursday as it carried families to a recreational spot on an island in the Tigris River. It was the most deadly incident in Mosul since the city was recaptured from Islamic State in a bloody and destructive conflict in 2017. U.S. artist Brian Donnelly unveiled a 37-meter-long inflatable sculpture called Companion in Hong Kong's iconic Victoria Harbour as part of his holiday tour. Donnelly, sporting his trademark black sweater, said he hopes this project can help people to relax. Hong Kong is the tour's third stop after Seoul and Taipei. His project is also as part of the city's Art Basel Festival, where the sculpture will remain until the end of the month. Pope Francis turned into a painter in an event held to raise funds for a Catholic network of schools. Pope Francis dipped a brush in blue paint and drew a cross and a bird on a canvas. Pope had been involved in the scholars group in Argentine capital of Buenos Aires.